begin the service. Um, there is a baptismal certificate on the podium in the narthex. I'd like you to sign it to um, testify that you were here for Elliot's baptism and that you've taken vows to help him be raised as a child of God. And also, for those of you who are watching online, um, I will be watching for you to respond to this, this service. And when you do, I will add your name to the certificate. And then we'll get it to Elliot after a few weeks. And it will be September when Elliot gets his certificate back for me because this will be my last service with you until the first Sunday in September. Um, because my renewal leave starts officially tomorrow. I'll be in the office during the day tomorrow, and then I will be gone until September 1st. And I want to say a heartfelt thank you for giving me this time to be away and to renew. I will be traveling to see my daughter this week, who's in Illinois, traveling to see a very good friend in Wisconsin. And then Steve and I will be taking a trip to Alaska, one of those lifelong bucket lists. Dreams um, in the end of August. Steve, I am traveling alone for a while, not because I'm leaving my husband behind, but because he's chosen to be part of Westerday's um, musical this year. So, lest there be concern about that. And we don't mind the little ones' voices, so don't worry about it at all. <laughs> all right. So, hear these words as we prepare our hearts for worship. Generous God, may we see you amidst the crowds in which we travel and respond with gladness and thanks for the miracle of goodness that your presence brings. Amen. And as we light the light of Christ, we rejoice that God's Spirit is with us. And that we can join together in this sanctuary, which we no longer take for granted, to praise and celebrate the God who is among us. God who is large enough to fill everything, no matter how high or broad or long or deep, we worship you today. God who can ease into small places and find us when we need you. We worship you today. God who is alongside your people. We worship you today.
baptism is a bold pronouncement of a life-changing and society-challenging commitment. It is the starting point for a new life rooted in Holy Scripture and informed by tradition, reason, and experience. Sisters and brothers, in the power of the Holy Spirit and in loving embrace of this community, we present Elliot Morris for baptism. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And to the parents and the godparents and the gathered community, in presenting this child for baptism, do you in reaffirmation of your own baptism, renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say we do. Do you affirm Jesus the Christ, Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Let us pray. God, as Jesus welcomed the children into his arms, and as you, O eternal parent, call us your child, we with boldness bring Elliot Morris into your presence today. You have already blessed him with parents and siblings who love him, grandparents who adore him, and aunts and uncles who would do anything for him. And now you choose to call him your child, your beloved one, just as you have named each one of us beloved. May Elliot learn to walk in this grace and take joy in the life you have given him, so that others may see your love through his life. We thank you for the gift of Elliot Morris and the gift of baptism through which we are all named children of God. And now with the boldness of beloved children, we speak the words of the creed in the affirmation of this faith. And I invite you to stand. Do you believe in God, the source, the fountain of life? Do you believe in Christ, the Son of God, embodied in Jesus of Nazareth and in the church? We believe. Do you believe in the liberating and renewing Spirit of God, the wellspring of new and eternal life? We believe. Amen. You may be seated. And if I can invite all the children who are present to come forward as we bless the waters of baptism. so everybody can see. Charlotte, you want to come stand by me? And Kristen, you kind of come right there so people can see it. Okay. Does she want to come up, do you think, or not? No. Okay. I understand. Let us pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we power, pause in the power of the Holy Spirit to gather with our ancestors in faith at the waters of your creating. Today, with John and Jesus, we wade into the waters, feeling the cleansing power of new life. This is the new life that spread over the waters in ages past, bringing light and life from darkness and nothingness. It is the same new life that lifted Noah above the floods and that led the people through the Red Sea waters. It is the new life that came to us through the womb of Mary in the precious gift of the one called Jesus. This Jesus, who was baptized by John and calls to us now to share in the new life of this baptism, so that in our dying we might know the new life, and our raising we might be light to the, even to the whole world. Right, hands in. Pour out your Holy Spirit. 
to bless this gift of water and Elliot Morris who receives it to wash away his sins and clothe him in righteousness and throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ we might share in final victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. All right. And if you all just want to stand over there, we're bringing Elliot and his parents and godparents up for the baptism. And one of Elliot's god um, mothers is away on National Guard training. So... Hopefully she can see the video later. <laughs> Elliot Morris, will you come to me? Yes, you will, then you'll give me a great, oh, you are going to give me a great big smile. Well, let's let you hold him. And let's put him right over the font. Hi, little one, come on. Elliot Morris, I'm going to put some water on your head to baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. For you are God's child, and we name you as God's child. Now, if you and your mom will come up with me. And have a wild air day. <laughs> Elliot. And Dad, too. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes, no, thank you. Elliot, you as a child of God are now the light of the world. So let your light so shine that others may see God and see God's love and through your light glorify God who is light and life through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to all people on this earth. Now will you come to me a minute? I'd like to introduce you to the congregation. <laughs> oh, you are not. You are mama's boy, aren't you? Or daddy's boy. Let's go out and say hi. So, Elliot, these are the children that you'll be going to Sunday school with and to BBS with, and they'll help you grow as a child of God. And is this somebody you know who's going to help you grow as a child of God? And the webs, they love children. And B. And your family. <laughs> and me. These people are all going to help you grow. Just teach Sunday school. And me, person who's part of our church, who will help you grow as a child of God. Oh, and look at we got to say hi to the world. And Bev and Mike, if you have questions about your health, you go to Bev. She'll help you. He'll greet you every time you come to church. Oh, well. Dad, and Judy lives right across the street. Oh, and you'll see Kathy and Brian and Mary Go when you're in Sunday school. And these guys are farmers out in the town. They help raise things for you to eat. <laughs> this is Martine. She will teach you Sunday school. Yeah. She'll dress you up as a shepherd, and you'll learn all about Jesus' ways. These are people who are going to surround you for the rest of your life as a child of God. We're so thankful you're part of us. There you go. Welcome, Elliot, to this church and to this community of faith. We're so glad you're with us. We're so glad you both are with us. And Addison. All right, you can go back and the praise team will sing a welcome.
Our scriptures this morning are from Ephesians chapter 3. This is why I kneel before Abba God, from whom every family in heaven and earth takes its name. And I pray that God, out of the riches of divine glory, will strengthen you inwardly with power through the workings of the Spirit. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, so that you, being rooted and grounded in love, will be able to grasp fully the breadth and length and height and depth of Christ's love. And with all Christ's holy ones, experience this love that surpasses all understanding, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. To God, whose power now at work in us can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, world without end. Amen. This piece of scripture is one of the earliest prayers of the early church, and I think it is one of the most beautiful pieces of scriptures that we have. This is Paul in the early church being eloquent and loving. We often think of Paul as being a scolding old man and setting up impossible standards for Christian living. But here Paul is speaking lovingly to a beloved church. He is hoping that beyond all else, this group of people who are probably a motley group, just like every small church around the world, he is hoping that beyond all else, that this beloved people will grow into all that they were meant to be as people of God. And Paul is promising that this growth into being the best they can be in Christ is possible because the God who loves them can do more than they could ever, ever imagine. I was on a call this week where we were discussing the ways we can encourage each other and even people who we don't agree with to a fuller expression of humanity, of who God created us to be. I've been on a number of these calls with this same question in one form or another. How do we, as individuals and as groups of people, begin to influence our society so that only the best of humanity becomes the norm. One person whom I really respect said that he believed that we are all influenced a lot by our genes. All of the history of our ancestors contributes to the ways we act and react to the situations in which we find ourselves. If our ancestors had trauma in their past, this gets, this gets lodged in our genes and influences the way we respond to stressful situations, even now, generations later. If our ancestors had it easy, our genes tell us that life is pretty good and we are better prepared to enjoy life. And I think this is a very Methodist way of thinking and looking at humanity. We are a sum of our parts. We react and act according to our experiences, either personal or shared, or generational. This is what we all have to work with. And for some, it's easier than for others. I want to give you an example. At one time, I worked with a program that was designed to help mothers qualifying for SNAP benefits and child care benefits. At this time, in this great social experiment, it was necessary for all women who received child care benefits and SNAP, which we used to call food, ship, food stamps, it was necessary for them to prove that they were attempting to find some kind of employment in order to keep their benefits. Employers who were willing to hire these women found that they were having a hard time making it in the workplace. So training centers were springing up all over in inner cities and outer ring suburbs. And I was helping with one of those programs trying to determine how best to help
help these women who wanted to be employed so that they could keep their benefits. But we somehow weren't making it with them. They were ma not making it to work regularly and were in danger of losing what little government assistance they had. Finally, we asked them what the problem was. And it turned out that they were always late. So we asked, do you use an alarm clock to help you get up in the morning? And we were met with puzzled expressions. Most did not own an alarm clock. This was way before cell phones were common in people's households. Why did they not own alarm clocks? Because their parents didn't own alarm clocks. And their parents' parents didn't own alarm clocks. Either they didn't need them in order to get up on time, or they did the sort of work that didn't require alarm clocks. It was a generational problem a problem that was embedded in their genetic makeup. Once we bought them all alarm clocks and taught them the importance of not hitting the snooze button, the program had a much higher rate of success. Well, now multiply this by all the other societal and economic and cultural causes of why we do things, and you will see that becoming who we are created to be as people of God can be very daunting. Except that God says, you don't need to get comfortable in your genes. My spirit can and will so fill you up that your genes will no longer be the only way you are shaped. Now in this passage, Paul uses some incredible language to describe this work of God's Spirit in our lives. It's not just an icing on the cake or a thin layer that covers up the flaws and imperfections of our lives. This is deep work, rooted and grounded work. When Christ dwells in us, Christ's Spirit envelops us and permeates all the depths of our being. Today, when we baptized Elliot, we proclaimed that God claimed him. While only just a little tiny bit of water filmed his forehead, we believe that God's Spirit so entered completely into Elliot's life that his whole identity has changed today. He's no longer just little Elliot. He is now Elliot, child of God who has so much potential for good and holy living that we can only now begin to imagine it. And we see this in our children every day, if we listen carefully, when we see them growing right before our eyes. This, just this week, I took our Sunday school age children to the Ruth River, and we had an amazing time wading in the water exploring the invertebrates that live in the river and just seeing where we could go along the river. Down by the Parsley Bridge, it's shallow enough that even preschoolers can venture all the way across. This is at least the second time I've taken our children down to the river. And, it is seen, and I have seen a tremendous amount of growth in them in just one experience. Here, you want to show? Oh yeah, there they are. Thank you. Children who are somewhat timid about going into the moving water plunge right in. I was up at the top of the river waiting for others and they said, I should never, can we go down now? Can we go down now? Some even plunged in without a life jacket and felt very comfortable. Even going so far as to float on her belly, which she has a hard time doing in a pool. And then coming up so excited because she felt how the river current helped her move. And here, the next one, let's see, there. Here I have a photo of our, one of our littlest ones holding a dragonfly larva in her hand. They look like mini dinosaurs. And she was thrilled. She said it tickled. The children collected all sorts of bugs and creatures. 
They collected a spiny soft shell turtle, which I have never seen in the wild. And I was so excited. Crayfish of every size. And this year, I didn't have to be right there while they found their treasures. They knew what to do. They knew where to look and how to use the equipment that I brought with them, me. And we ended, as we ended the day, we said a little thanks for the gift of the river and all of the creatures we found in it. And one of the older ones said confidently that finding all these creatures means that the river is clean. And that is exactly right. He and the others have learned that finding creepy, crawly things in the river is a good and beautiful thing because it means we're taking care of our watershed. These are just a few of the ways I saw the children grow from one summer to the next, physically, mentally, and spiritually. What about us? How do we see ourselves growing? How is God's spirit that is deep within our being leading us to spiritual and mental growth? As we have surrounded Elliot and our children in their baptism, we promise to point them in the way towards a life of discipleship that reflects God's love. We promise to continue to resist evil, injustice, in whatever forms they present themselves. We promise to serve Jesus by putting our whole trust in him and open ourselves to love people of every ages, nations, and races. And we promise to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world. In other words, we promise to allow the deep and wide and high and more than we can imagine love of God to permeate our lives and to bring us into spiritual maturity. So what are we doing to make sure that we are growing into the love of Christ so that we can be all we are meant to be? That will be one way we can contribute to a world in which all people will be invited into deep relationship with God and each other. That will be one question, one way that we will become a church that is important for this community so that our world can more and more reflect the reality of the kingdom of God. So what are you doing to make sure that you are growing into the love of Christ so that you can be all you can be for the benefit and the glory of God?
that if we don't hold on to what we have got, we will lose it. So we don't share what we can. Sometimes we make selfish decisions that make things harder for people. Sometimes we feel that we are not enough. So God, we confess that we have not always trusted you, that we have not always believed in you, that we have not always been wise, that we have not always sought after your love. Forgive us and look upon us again, that we might offer praise that is worthy of your name and peace to your creation. We are thankful that we can know that you, God, are a God of love, more love than we can know or imagine, that you work powerfully more than we can ask. We are loved by you, God. Help us to trust this. Help us to live into this. Help us to share this. And help us to pray as you taught us. Our loving God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the dominion, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.